It's winter. I have a slight cold. And the BBC are doing yet another adaptation of A Christmas Carol. Can only be one thing. I've got a doozy for you today. We are going to look at Evelina by Francis Burney, often called Fanny Burney. Now, everyone I know who has ever read this book has said, why aren't there any adaptations of it? Everybody. It's almost the first thing that comes up. If there's ever a poll of which books should have an adaptation, Evelina is usually the first one. A little bit of history about the book then. Francis Burney was a daughter of Charles Burney, who was a musician and musical historian. And she couldn't read or write for a long time. She was thought of as a bit of an idiot child. But all of a sudden, about the age of eight, she picked it up. And she picked it up suddenly and quickly and with great force. And she loved reading and writing. And she became her dad's sort of secretary. But at the same time, she had a couple of secret pleasures. One of these was writing a journal. And another was writing novels. Well, she was writing a novel called Carolyn Evelyn. We don't know how this book goes because uh, she burnt it. She was embarrassed. At that time, writing the novels was not seen to be a very ladylike thing to do. And she was worried it would reflect badly on her and reflect badly on her family. But she just had to write. So she wrote a sequel to it. And this sequel was called Evelina. Now, when it was finished and she'd gone through it and she was ready for publishing, she couldn't just go out and say, here is my novel, because she didn't want anyone to know it was her. So she created all this very elaborate ruse, where she created all these fake names and got her brother to pretend to be her dealer. And he went in between her and the publisher, and she sold the rights to Evelina. And it was a massive smash. Everyone was reading it, and everyone was wondering who this mysterious author might be. Eventually it came out, it was Fanny Burney, and uh, she was sort of cosseted, she was taken into hand by society and treated um, sort of like a, a pet by a number of famous people. At the same time, she was writing a play which ended up never being performed because it was too vicious and too satirical. Then she became part of the royal household, which was a very miserable time for her. And when she finally got out of that, she became a novelist again. She married a, a man called Darbley, who was an escapee from the French Revolution. For a while, she was trapped in France during the Revolution, and she came back again. And she wrote four novels uh, of increasing length, and in my personal view, uh, boringness. But Evelina is really, really good. Now, why... Does everyone say, why is this not adapted? Well, this is a huge influence on Jane Austen. If you read Jane Austen's early work, a lot of it reads a bit like this, but sillier. And in fact, the, the later Jane Austen is satirical, but it's a very refined sort of satire. It's uh, It's got sharp needles, but underneath gentle gloves. In Evelina, Fanny Verney just goes in full out attack mode. There's some really vicious things in this. Um, she shows up how vapid and how horrible the, the upper classes are. by They do things like make old ladies race and bet on it. And then there's a monkey who savages someone's nose. And, you know, there are some pretty vicious bits. But the general frame is Evelina is the, the um, daughter of Carolyn Evelyn who has died. And she doesn't really have a place. She has um, a father figure who she wants to live up to. Uh, and she has all these bits of families. Uh, some of them are very well-to-do. Some of them are city people who are not so well-to-do and embarrass her dreadfully. And she wants to come out into the world, find her place. And she quickly falls in love, uh, yeah, with someone called Lord Orville. And the thing about Lord Orville is he's not so sure about her because she's a very unknown quantity. And so as she's trying to impress him, uh, he's weighing her up. And uh, all these other people come and ruin it. And there are all these farcical scenes. Uh, and they take place in all the great um, society sort of set pieces. There's a set piece in Vauxhall Gardens, which if you go to the Museum of London, they use bits of it in their Vauxhall Gardens experience there. Uh, there's a set piece in a the theatre. There's a set piece in um, Bath. And so you get a lot of what you get in Jane Austen. But 
slightly more rambunctious. There's a there's a bit more rough and ready quality to it, and you get you know the love story, but you get so much piss taken on the way. It's absolutely wonderful. Why has it never been done? I don't know. Nobody knows. I suppose it's name recognition. Because as I said, everyone who's read it asks why hasn't it been done. But then there's a lot of people who haven't read it. Uh, maybe. Maybe one day we shall get the Evelina we deserve. And what is the Evelina we deserve? Well, we could go miniseries. We could go film. Both would work. I think miniseries would go better because of the nature of set pieces. You could have in each episode a definite set piece, say a theatre one, or a, um, you know, one in Vauxhall Gardens, or one at a posh house, that kind of thing. I think that would work very well, and I think the BBC really should get on it. Uh, and if they did, sales of Evelina would go right up. I think if it had a little bit of traction behind it, it would be maybe not every bit as popular as Pride and Prejudice, but certainly as popular as sort of not lesser Jane Austen, but the less popular Jane Austen. Um, there is, I think, a huge market for an Evelina in there somewhere. And I really do think people should go out and get it. Uh, get the book. What if we increase the sales of the book? Then maybe a TV series would be an inevitability. Uh, that could work very, very well. Uh, I mean, there's lots of odd little things in this book. For example, there's the obligatory rom-com shopping montage that takes place in this book, which is very good. There's a snidey, sneaky, horrible um, man who, who's very well to do. He's, he's rich, but he's so forward, and Evelina is, is kind of shy, and she has to be shy. In fact, her diffidence and her, her sort of uh, bashfulness... It is one of her main strengths and one of the main ways that she gets her way through the story. Uh, in some ways, you could say that she's the slight dull bit of wet grass in which the other more interesting characters surround. There's an extent that that's true, uh, but I think that's true of a lot of these early novels. And she isn't completely uninteresting. Indeed, she has a strength in her, but she knows how precarious her situation is. Because she has no background really, and she has no nothing to fall back on. So every forward step in her life depends on her getting her marriage right. This is marriage, not as career, yes, but as everything. You have to marry the right person, or the whole of your life could go to shit. Um, and so there is a lot of humour in Evelina. There's a lot of piss taking. There's some her wonderful city cousins who are just. They try and ape the aristocracy and they do it so badly that they're horribly boorish and unpleasant and, and just... Ugh. And she's got all that funny going on. But there is a solid fear that drives it and a solid tension. Um, in a way that I think there's not so much tension in Austin. I think a lot of the Austin um, heroines could possibly live lives alone uh, as Austin did but Evelina can't her whole future relies on a good marriage so yeah Evelina go check it out the man is the man.